One question, Trent, that I would wanted you to address is really hot topic right now is concussion yeah. and how that relates to athletes' future health and um, their movement. And so can you speak a little bit to that with regards to the AMI? Yeah, you know, so uh, I'm actually speaking at a sports medicine conference next week on this very topic, and that's um, uh, concussion and return to play. Let me preface this by saying I am not a concussion specialist. Uh, if you come to me with a concussion, I am, I'm not the person to treat your vestibular systems, all that stuff. So I, I'm speaking a little bit outside of that, okay? Um, what I am going to tell you is that um, we, started, we started to track concussion, okay? So we, we captured demographic information uh, with each assessment. Um, and early on, before we even uh, started integrating this with Dorsa V, um, we actually started tracking uh, concussion and movement. Um, and we started to see some very interesting things. Number one, we started to see that those who reported uh, concussions also reported more lower kinetic chain injuries. The other thing that we started to see was that those who had a previous history of concussion, their, their motion was horrible. Um, and so uh, fast forward uh, in 2016, a paper was published by Gilbert. And Gilbert showed that from a systematic review that those who had reported a concussion were three times more likely to suffer a lower kinetic chain injury uh, after a concussion, three times more likely. Um, since then, McPherson uh, has published multiple systematic reviews uh, in 2019 that shows that you're two to three times more likely to suffer a lower kinetic chain injury up to three years after a concussion. So we knew there was something going on. Um, and, and a couple of things that we see uh, with those folks who have concussion, again, keeping in mind, I'm not a concussion specialist, but one of the things that we do see is that those who've had a history of concussion um, have less frontal plane control. So when they get into a single leg stance on both sides, uh, what ends up happening is that their frontal plane motion is much greater and their speeds are much higher. The other thing that we see is that they lack pelvic control. And so when we, take, when we talk about pelvic control, is your ability to control your pelvis. Do you fall into a Trendelenburg? Do you fall into a retro Trendelenburg or a corkscrew where your hips kind of drop Trendelenburg and rotate? So what we see is that those who've had a concussion tend to have less pelvic control. So their, their center of mass is moving all over the place. Um, and then the other thing that we see is that when they do a single leg hop, they jump up in the air and they land and you plant that land, right? So what we see is that people who've had a concussion, they jump up in there and they plant and they go duck, 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 until they become stable. Now, um, Dr. Pappas published a paper back in, I think it was 2012, that showed that they call that time to stability. From the land to the time where they become stable is called time to stability. And what he showed uh, was that the greater that time to stability, uh, the more likely you are to, to suffer a lower kinetic chain injury. So, so all of these things we're kind of seeing, uh, we're also seeing an increased loss of balance during single limb uh, performance of the test. So those who've had a previous concussion, they touch down the opposite limb a lot. Those are all things that we know from a sports perspective, you don't want to do that. I mean, you don't want to be wondering where your hips are at in space as you're, you know, going for a layup or as you're going up for a header on a ball or something like that. So these are all things that we know that we have to control uh, in sports um, and things that we know that we're seeing uh, with a history of concussion. So my question when I see those papers, McPherson, et cetera, um, is the question is why? why? Why are you at greater risk? And I think what we're seeing is some of the reason why, because there is less frontal plane control. There is more loss of balance. There is less pelvic control. Um, there is greater time to stability. Again, I don't know if those answers are clear, but I will tell you um, one of the things that we've seen, and we just had a paper published uh, earlier this year, uh, that looked at some of our volleyball uh, players. We have another one that's coming out uh, looking at football. And one of the things that we've seen is that as we improve results on the EMI, we saw concussion rates going down. Now, the first time that this happened in one of our, our studies, I was like, boy, that's got to be a fluke. Like, there is no way that this movement assessment is impacting concussion. Just that, that can't happen, right? So uh, the second time that happened, we also saw a significant reduction. When I say significant, like 40% reduction. Um, and then uh, uh, just last year, a Johnston study came out and showed that those who had less pelvic control 
during single limb activities, we're more likely to get concussed. Um, if you want that reference, email me. I'm happy to send it to you. Um, but that started to explain to me that, hey, maybe there is a correlation. Maybe there is a correlation that, hey, if we're improving movement, maybe the athlete's actually avoiding the concussive event. I don't know. I don't know what the cause there is. But what we are seeing is that you improve results on the test, concussion rates go down. 